Good luck. I pushed the button, but it took a second there to register, so let me check that. Okay, yeah. I only heard one sound. It did, in fact, register. Alright, so we're going to play very similar thing to what we played last time. Actually, um, having seen what we've seen yesterday, and having just watched... Um, oh, okay. Yeah, Muranaka did a video where he played Silver uh, 4 8 here. Um, that's not what we're seeing today. So we can instead play this way, I think. Have to mix it up every game just to make things exciting. But I think this is fine. Actually, no. Well, yeah, that's fine. This does not hang anything. So, this gives us an opportunity to try another strategy. Um, which is Bishop Exchange proper. Um, I did forever ago watch Hidechi present on this, and hopefully can remember at least a tenth of what I saw. But probably not. So either way, this will be fun. It's always fun. Well, at least we have our opponent thinking as well. Okay, just how interesting do I want to make this? Um, I think this is still fine. At any rate, it does look interesting. One thing that is regrettable about this um, is that I've blocked my silver in the short term, but I think it's fine. My opponents played this kind of, well, it's, I guess it is among many move orders possible to reach Yagura from there. Um, there's many castles that could be formed and so I'm curious what castle my opponent will choose um, okay well that looks exciting um I don't see what's going on here. So if he moves the silver onto the third file in front of the pawn, um, things get confusing in a hurry. Yeah, if he plays this right here, it's clear that he's channeling an attack down the third file. But I don't know that I need to be too concerned because his king is still in the center of the board 
And because I can open the fourth file right now. One, two, three pawn moves. So um, we could have a lot of action that is about to take place. Plus, if he pushes the pawn, I have a bishop I can exchange and then drop my bishop on 5-5. Five, five. So not clear what he's doing. Um, okay, if I push the fourth file pawn, if I push here, they push, push, push. Supposing I take, silver takes, we exchange bishops somewhere. He's applying a lot of pressure. Um, hmm. So yeah, I think it's best that I just continue putting my king somewhere relatively safe. And ask what my opponent is doing. Okay. All right. I still don't see a problem. Um, hmm. I mean, it would be very nice to activate my rook, but, um... Is this not how I'm supposed to play here? I guess we'll find out. So I guess we're both trying to aggressively save Tempe um, but I'm not sure how well this is going to work. So arguably I did lose a tempo exchanging bishops over here, but, um, kind of like my position a lot. All right, so what's his response to this bishop drop? I expect bishop 3-7, and then I take and knight takes, and we exchange pawns, and then I drop a pawn on the head of the knight, and my attack is one move faster. So this should be interesting. So I did mention forever ago watching Hidechi's series about uh, bishop exchange, and it is fascinating. This, if it could be called anything, would be, I guess, called tempo loss bishop exchange. And I lost two tempi, one moving the bishop and two moving it again. But, um, so yeah, we're in uncharted waters here, but I think we're fine. Right, so... I expected this, and I expected the knight to capture, and now I can attack your knight. So this was my idea.
And if the silver moves to capture the pawn, I just put another pawn down. I have been on the receiving end of repeated pawn attacks on the third rank against my minor piece. Every time I move my knight, it ends up getting sacrificed. Um, on the other hand, he could actually just move the knight forward and threaten to capture my center pawn. I probably should have thought about that before diving too deep into this. But I think there's ways I can do something about that. Like, I could put my bishop on 6-6 six, six here, hitting the rook, defending my pawn. They drop their bishop or something to defend, and I find some way to defend my thing. Um, that's one possibility. And others, like, I drop the bishop defending both pawns, and they come up with something creative like moving the rook to hit this, and I don't know what to do. And others, I just directly defend the pawn, I guess, somehow. Which seems unenterprising, but, you know. Oh, you could actually yeah, move the rook over onto the file that the pawn's on, um, which would encourage me to drop a bishop. Um, that could be interesting. See, advancing the knight might be the most critical move here. Um, it's just with his king in the center, I really want to exchange pieces. So, um, I got a bishop in hand. That's kind of fun. All right. <sighs> Can I get a rook in hand, perhaps? All right. Now we're talking. I should probably make some effort to read this out before just playing it, but it looks very fun to play. On the other hand, if I just defend my pawn, either with either of my generals or my rook, like if I move the rook, okay, yeah, he does have a bishop drop back here, that's painful. Um, I'm not sure how bad it is, but taking one tempo to defend this might be the prudent thing to do here. Oh, also, I could just do bishop fork, pick off the rook directly. Um, and then when he attacks my rook, try to move it out of the way of his knight. Hmm. Well, this got complicated in a hurry. Um... Yeah, literally everything's on fire, so it's a little tricky to pick my next move. <sighs> Defending this pawn seems prudent, um, but then he can move his rook over and hit my pawn, and my attack vaporizes. So maybe I'm supposed to go for it. Take here, he takes my rook, I take the knight, we both... He's got stuff to drop. My castle's not that secure. That's not so bright. Um, I move my bishop here. Actually, I could check and then retreat the bishop to protect the pawn. That could be fun. Um, and then he drops the bishop here to continue the attack. Hmm. That's less fun. Uh, it just feels like I'm missing something. I mean, if I move the rook over and allow this bishop fork, I think that's fine. Because I still get a rook for free. Um, I 
also possible is promote the pawn. Knight takes pawn. Uh, token takes pawn. Knight takes rook. Token takes other pawn. Then just try to attack the king directly, completely ignoring what's going on in my half of the board. So if I take here, he takes my rook. If I check with the bishop, um, probably blocks the check. I take. He takes my token or my bishop. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. I have some idea how I feel about it. Um, hmm. Oh, okay, I see what I can do. Now, he does have a pawn drop here, which would just cause us to exchange stuff, but if I drop a bishop here, if he tries to do anything tricky, um, like bishop drops somewhere on this diagonal, I can just exchange and drop my bishop here again. So I'm the only player attacking here. Um, hmm. Yeah, this somehow looks like the correct thing to do. It's scary that, like, I had this bishop check, I had this pawn promotion, and yet I'm playing this very slow move back here. But, um... I don't know. I don't see what he can do to make use of this tempo. And I see, like, if this knight takes, he's starting to attack and it gets scary. So, yeah, we're just going to have this extremely strange position. So this continues attacking the rook. Continues threatening this bishop check. Yeah, I could bishop check and then move my rook over or something if I really wimp out. But I guess the plan is... Well, and yeah, they could drop the bishop somewhere in the middle and I could still promote my pawn. Um, or if they drop it here, I could exchange. And, like, I've invoked a weakness right near their king. Um... Or inflicted a weakness, but yeah, take, pawn promote, I have the square to drop my bishop on now. Um, wait, wait, if I do that, silver takes. And I can defend my pawn and then chase down this knight for free. Um...
Okay. Well, let's do it. Let's see where we end up now. There's two variations I've been trying to read out. One of them is, um, I guess, in both lines, Lady Bishop takes Bishop. But one of them I take back. In the other, I just take the Rook. And it's the other that convinced me that this could be interesting. Um, but Bishop takes Bishop, Pawn takes. If Knight takes, Pawn takes Rook is interesting too. But yeah, I think having the rook here could be useful. Although I haven't found a good square for it yet. Um, I could hit the silver from behind. Uh, but this looks spooky. Um... If they take my bishop, I should probably just recapture. And I don't know that like this intermezzo of me putting my bishop here and us exchanging has helped me in any meaningful way. Likely the opposite. But, um... Yeah, I don't see a way to make Pawn Takes Rook worthwhile. Uh, which is most unfortunate. So I think he is realizing that if he wants to attack, he will need to play knight takes pawn. And I think he's trying to read this out. I don't see what the alternative is. Like, there is a pawn drop on 3-3, three, 3-7, uh, three, 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 whatever. Yeah, this is the third rank up, third from the left, since I'm go to. So yeah, this is forced. Um, and I think it is a good move for him. <sighs> what I've been struggling with here is how do I respond to this? Uh, if my rook runs away, it never activates, but maybe that's okay. Or does it get active? If I retreat, they put the bishop somewhere, my rook hits this knight, they can't interpose a pawn, and then my rook's threatening to uh, wipe out their king directly. So maybe that is a way to activate the rook, especially because nothing can defend this knight. Oh, <laughs> incidentally, because the pawn... Okay, yeah, I guess that's the hidden meaning behind my move, after all. Um, okay. We'll accept that. Um, I did not see that in advance. So 
So yeah, now he has a choice. If he puts his rook directly in front of his king, my pawn takes and hits the rook. If he doesn't move the rook, hey, free rook. Um, he's got two pawns and a bishop. And nothing to aim at. Like, okay, yes, my rook's not defended. That would be something to aim at. But it's just going to move over to hit the knight. So... Yeah, that's just complicated. This is why you want to castle early. So... Oh, this is a way to defend the knight. All right. Well, that should make things fun and exciting for everyone. Um, so are we defending the knight? Is that the idea? I'm too curious. Because if this rook moves over, I can attack the rook with a bishop drop. And if the rook moves, then I can take this. And since I don't have a pawn on the center file, and since I'll have taken a pawn, I'm threatening stuff all of a sudden. Um, so, that looks fun. Maybe I'm getting too excited, but uh, there has to be some occasion under which to be excited in this game. And I think that occasion is now. So next idea is to take the pawn, then push this pawn, and then fork the bishop, king, and rook. Um, which I think in turn means that when I take this pawn, the king will start running, and I'll just chase down this gold and continue attacking. Um... He might also put down his bishop somewhere and just say, you know, enough is enough. We'll just give the rook for a bishop. But that'll also open a hole directly in front of the king. Um, so that's concerning, too. The silver is beautiful. It's just all these, all three of these generals are on the wrong side of the board. Um... but otherwise it'd be uh, exciting. I 
I think what we're both trying to figure out now um, is if a bishop drop, <laughs> trying to exchange bishops, makes things better or worse. Well, I see our emotes have come out in force. That's a lovely green, to be honest. Yep, so as I pointed out, pawn up and then this bishop fork looks interesting. All right. Wow. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Um, everything is hanging. Well, I think I need to stick to the script. But silver, no. Trying to do something clever at this stage could lose me the game. I just need to continue attacking. Um, hmm. This is challenging. Noticing candidate moves while you're in the last 30 seconds of your Byoyomi is stressful. Um, but I don't see a refutation to this. Um, I think I'm starting to see one, though. And it's rather ugly. Um, the problem here that I just noticed is he can attack my gold. And this is actually really scary. Um, at first, it does not look possible to attack. But yeah, that's the move because of this rook drop threat. Um, So that makes things awfully scary. Um, what do we do? All right, we're going to unpin uh, my silver. So I'm giving up a gold general for a tempo. Um, I expected him to sacrifice his bishop, although I think that's quite dangerous, too. It's not the move I would have played, but maybe it's fine. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't have a response to this. Um, yeah, well played, I guess, is the response. Good game. 
All right. Well, that was exciting. All right. Let's uh, we'll take this chat out of emotes only mode in a second. Yeah. Uh, good game. So obviously, I got carried away. Uh, so yeah, this. Uh, well, it's an interesting opening. Not really totally sure what happened, but stuff did happen. Um, so, um, I kept refusing to close the diagonal. Uh, what piece is that on 5-2? Uh, yeah. Yeah. In the moment that uh, Bishop Exchange uh, was great for me. Well, I'm not really sure. I mean, yeah, ostensibly in the game there were chances, but... Um, So, hmm. so yeah, I'm not sure if I could have held this with a defensive only mindset. Um, so like I had this, um, okay. Yeah, Destiny likes this bishop fork. Uh, so I was looking at this. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So I did see this and saw the... Oh! That was the move I missed. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. This is the critical thing. Um, <laughs> Destiny leaves. Fair enough. Um, there's the refutation. Destiny out. <laughs> yeah. Um, that explains it. Yeah, now welcome. Uh, yeah, this is exactly right. I felt like both of us missed several things even before this point, but... Uh, yeah, this is clearly uh, critical. Um, yeah. Uh, apparently you don't need to castle if you're playing against me. Um, so, yeah. In chess we call it castling. In Shogi, it's building a castle, but yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so attacking would have been just fine if I just had the right moves. Um, yeah, this particular variation looks, uh, crushing. Uh, so I guess if we play this <laughs> next time, uh, maybe I'll find it. Uh, but more seriously, like, yeah, this um, you know, castling in general is a good idea. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I just assumed you missed, like, this and then the pawn drop hitting the knight. Um, so, because, like, it's a strong idea, even if I didn't execute it correctly. It, um, say what you will about rapid attacks, the king in the center is always subject to a rapid attack. Um, uh, oh,
yeah, the other alternative was uh, defending like this. Yeah, this is what I thought might happen. And I think I would have been satisfied with this. Uh, but I thought this, this is what I expected to occur. Uh, and then I just have this beautiful bishop on 5-5 five five that I've wasted two tempos to put here. But it forced him to spend a tempo putting the rook there, so it's all fine. Um... Well, until I attack correctly, it's okay. Um, but yeah, once I start finding the good moves, I um, need to be a little bit cautious. So, what else is there to look at? Like, okay, yeah, it's an end game. a lot of crazy stuff happened. Um... I don't know if I should have played the rook there immediately, uh, given that I can win the knight whenever. Like, a lot of the things I did here are kind of questionable, but, um, yeah. Oh, I wonder. I didn't even see this until now, but... Hmm. Maybe this is playable, too. Um, yeah, maybe if I uh, completed my castle, I would like a rook exchange, uh, but not yet, so, um, Oh, actually, yeah, that's a cool idea, too. Because, supposing you do this, I have that. Oops. Um. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I need to learn to attack. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> But, like, what the heck? Uh, I got overconfident because he didn't build a castle and he just left his king in the center. And I got overconfident. So, the game ended in a way that rewards the attitude of the players. So, fine. Like, even here, I could, if I put in more effort, I could find token takes and the pawn drop and, like, force a rook exchange and it's still terrible here but yeah i missed so many things um well yeah also in biyomi like i d changed my mind about how i was going to do this and that didn't turn out well either um because if i play this then we see this, and I didn't think this was good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, oh, hello. Yeah. Well, so they say I've gotten strong. Uh, this is what my rating says. This is just, I don't know. I think I'm fluctuating somewhere between 15 and 1600. I think that's where I'm at. And maybe if I work on my end game, um, maybe sometime I can, I don't know, work my way up. But um, yeah, my end game obviously needs work. And the more I learn about this game, um, the better I can manage my time in the rest of the game. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. 
We got... I haven't played very many positions like this, so this is a nice find. And at this point, even here, maybe there's something I can do. Actually, probably not. Um, so I was trying to figure out, like, if I just move the gold away, I'm still under a heavy attack, still losing both my generals and your king escapes. So, like, I'm kind of cooked here. Um, so yeah, it's my fault for getting here, but, uh, like you say, there's chances. Uh, so, I'm not sure, yeah, it's a very quick game, um, but, uh, I think there's still a lot to learn from it. Oh, that's interesting, too. Hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, the gold drop on 8-2 is more idiomatic. Because that way you don't need to have an extra rook to pull it off. Um, so, yeah, if I just knew anything about endgames... Um, I would have a better understanding of what it takes to defend under these circumstances. So, yeah, I just need to work on that a lot. Um, yeah, no one... Well, we'll put it this way. I did make an attempt to castle, didn't I? I did try. I got carried away, but, like, I tried. Um, but yeah, one player here... <laughs> very much wants to see a very exciting game, and the other player is not going to discourage it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it wouldn't surprise me if, like, everything is Sume there. Just, like, there's no way that my attack ever works in that position. So, um, yeah, I'm getting Sume. And I didn't see any of these Sume ideas. Um, like, even up to the point where it's, like, mate in 1 or mate in 3 at the end, um, I didn't see that. So, I have a lot of work to do on my endgame. It's the ability to find all these crazy tactics um, and play exciting moves earlier on that's netting me points. Uh, it's I really need to work on my endgame. So, yeah, this is... Uh, I was surprised just how quickly... Uh, we transitioned into an endgame. But, uh, maybe I shouldn't be. Like, I was thinking, surely I can scare him into defending somehow. Uh, yeah, but... This, there's nothing I can do to scare him. He's quite... Um, yeah. So, I forget what our uh, long-term record is, but... Yeah. Yeah, we're both here <laughs> to learn something from this. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, in fact, yeah, our most recent three games, I think we've gone... I don't remember. Uh, uh, no, we had... I won two of those. One was a very close, difficult game. One was a blowout in the opening, and the other here has been a blowout the other way, so uh, it was exciting. Um, <laughs> you sense a weakness. You see, this is why we play this. Well, we play this in the teaching ladder, and then when like people play like tourney to master and other things, we just play like fourth foul rook. And say, no, not in competitive play. If you want to do the fun stuff, you got to join the teaching ladder. So, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> side pawn picker. Yeah. Yeah, it would not be a bad idea for me to start learning that. Um, but, uh, also, like, it's a lot to learn. And so I prefer just... I would prefer if I could just play Swinging Rook every single game, at least 
like until I am surviving the opening and my opponent is not forcing me to go into the end game right after the opening. Um, so like if I can get to a point where I'm actually, I know, getting positions that don't suck by move twenty, um, then maybe I'll explore a bit more. But um, yeah, this position didn't suck. I just made it bad very quickly thereafter, but usually by move 20 I'm in deep trouble. So uh, that's why I'm trying to stick exclusively with Swinging Rook. It's just sometimes the opponent really wants to play Static Rook and really wants to play an attack over here and keep the diagonal open. And so in the teaching ladder, at least once in a while, I want to try crazy stuff, but um, but yeah, in tournaments, I'm probably not going to bust this out. Um, yeah, how can I have a weakness to an opening which can be refuted with a single pawn push? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> uh, truly a mystery. Anyhow, uh, thanks to everyone for the analysis. It's been an interesting game. And hopefully I'll remember to work on my end games. And remember not to panic like I did here. Like, my bishop drop moved there. I could have spent more time. I had time on my clock to figure it out. And over here, this was anxious. And uh, where was my final anxious move here? This one. Yeah. So I need to, like, find a way to calm down during these games. Even though by this point it's probably too late. Um, the thing that might be interesting is this here. But it's still a mess. Um, yeah, I don't know how this goes. Could be fun. But yeah, thanks to everyone for the analysis.